$100. Here's a paralegal, Melinda Collis. And this is a radio announcer, Dennis Thibodeau. Rick is the champion. Melinda and Dennis, you are the challenger. And now, here is your master of the challenge, Dick Clark. Thank you. Wow. I have stacked the audience today. These are my people. Do you realize that it's just about three weeks till Christmas? Isn't, I mean, that's, that's scary stuff. Welcome to the Challengers today. Melinda and Dennis will be doing their very best not to take your money away, Rick, but to stop you at that point. You've won almost $20,000. How are you, sir? Just fine. Thank you, Dick. I think these people have a glint in their eyes, so you've got a challenge coming up. Uh, remember, the player who earns the most money today will go on to our ultimate challenge at the end of today's show, and there will be one question, and it will be worth $10,000. Good luck to everybody. I'm going to start you all off with the $200 there and the toss-up question. Judge, are you ready to go, sir? Ready and raring. Oh, he sounds like he's in a good mood today, folks. That's a good sign. For control of the game, then, all the money you earn today goes into your Citibank Visa account, and the cash and the benefits in the account are yours to keep. If you're ready, let's go. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher of Great Britain recently announced her resignation as head of what party? Rick? The Conservative Party. You're right, sir, and you've got control of the game. You go to the board and hear the categories. We have Rhyme Time, Musical Theater, Dandy Candy, They're All Hoods, Two Famous Twosomes, and Lots of Bull. Which one would you like? <laughs> Let's try They're All Hoods, please. They're All Hoods, please. All right, the first one is Robin Hood, Mount Hood, and Red Riding Hood. The higher the value, the tougher the question. Select one and wait. make a wager. All right, uh, we'll go for the $150 question, Melinda. In the Robin Hood Tales, one of Robin's closest companions is a portly monk named what? Friar John. What did you say? Friar John. And no, Friar no, Tuck. Friar Tuck was the answer. I'm sorry, you don't get that one. That'll cost you $150. Rick and Dennis for $250. The popular children's story, Little Red Riding Hood, was written down by the brothers Grimm. One of those brothers was Wilhelm. Wilhelm. Name the other. Rick. Johan. Jo uh, no, Jacob. Or Jakob. I'm sorry, we had a tough go at that round. Rick, you've got a choice of these over there. What would you like? Let's try rhyme time, please. Rhyme time. All right. For $150 cities, horses, and authors. Select one and make a wager. All right. Uh, Melinda, for $150, give me a pair of two-syllable rhyming words describing the capital city of Idaho while there's a loud racket going on there. Noisy Boise. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Rick and Dennis. Gentlemen, for $250, give me a pair of three-syllable rhyming words naming the fictional doctor created by Boris Pasternak if he were nicknamed for the Windy City. Rick? Chicago Zavago. That's right. All right enough of that. We got out of that one. Rick, you're on. Well, let's stick with rhymes and go for Dandy Candy. Dandy Candy. We're in a groove here. For $150, we have new products, catchy slogans, and top sellers at $250. Please make a wager. All right, for $200, Rick, sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. What Peter Paul candy bar would you be eating if you didn't feel like a nut? Mounds. Mounds is right. For $250, Melinda and Dennis. What candy bar made of creamy nougat Topped with caramel and peanuts, then covered with milk chocolate, ranks as the number one candy bar in the U.S. Melinda? Snickers? Snickers is right for $250. You get control of the game. Two subjects left over there. I think I'll take lots of bull, please. Lots of bull. All right. Bull run up there and bull Durham and bull fighting. Lots of bull. Make a wager. Everybody going for the bull fighting question. All of the values double. That makes that one worth $500. Everybody stand by for this. The world's largest bullfighting arena is not located in Spain, but in what Latin American city? Rick? Mexico City. That is right for $500. Got Bull Run and Bull Durham. You want to play either one? Let's go with Bull Run, please. Bull Run for $300 during the Civil War. At the Second Battle of Bull Run, part of the Confederate forces were led by General T.J. Jackson. What's his nickname? Stonewall. Stonewall's right for $300. Now you can sweep the board a grand total of $1,200. You want to do it? Let's do it. All right. 
For $400 in the film Bull Durham, Kevin Costner sets women's hearts aflutter, especially a woman named Annie Savoy. Name the actress who played her. Susan Sarandon. You swept the board for $1,200. Congratulations. Rick, is it musical theater or famous twosomes your choice? Famous twosomes, please. Famous twosomes for $150. People, places, and things. Time to make a wager. For $150, Melinda, name the two zany comedians who appeared in films with Frankenstein, The Mummy, and The Wolfman. Abbott and Costello. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Gentlemen, Rick and Dennis, for $250, what two words meaning useless odds and ends originally referred to floating wreckage and material deliberately cast overboard from a sinking ship? Dennis? Jetsam and Flotsam. That is correct for $250. The last situation is musical theater. Let me reveal the questions for you. We have a $150 question on Rodgers and Hammerstein, George Gershwin, Gilbert and Sullivan, the last category. Bet, please. Venice. Thank you, sir. Rick, for $200, name the classic George Gershwin musical that includes the songs It Ain't Necessarily So and Summertime. Porgy and Bess. That's right, for $200. Melinda and Dennis for $250. Finish this list of little maids from the Gilbert and Sullivan operetta, The Mikado. There was Peep, Bo, Pity, Sing, and Who. Last one was Yum, Yum. All right, so far, Rick, you've got a substantial lead at $1,900. Needless to say, that can all change. When we move to the second half of the game, when we get there, we double the value of all of our questions, and we'll do it right after this. You've only practiced an hour. And now, let's get back to the challengers. Thank you, Don. I've talked to people who do practically everything in the world, butchers, bakers, candlestick makers. What is a deposition summarizer? That is someone who takes deposition transcripts for attorneys and condenses them into a small format that they can read easily and takes out all the ex extemporaneous information that people tend so to the, ramble The lawyer about. can grab the essence of it quickly? That's right. I don't envy you that. You see, those <laughs> depositions are usually thousands of pages long. Rick, what do you do when you're not here? You're into volunteer work, somebody said? Well, my wife has got me involved with a group called, in San Diego called Episcopal Community Services, which provides a, a wide variety of services for uh, homeless people, battered women, uh, children, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, we're involved with the fundraising for it and things like that. It's a great group of people. Much good luck with that. Thank you for joining us. Dennis, you and I have something in common. I, I work the radio every now and again, about eight hours a week. As a matter of fact, where do you do your announcing? I work for a pair of radio stations in Nashville, Tennessee. One of them is a country station. The other one plays adult rock music. Why don't you mention their call letters since why not? Our, or did they tell you not to? Well, uh, it's all right. Go ahead. Uh, our country station is WHNK. I named it after Hank. And our FM adult rock station is WRLT. We welcome you all. What's this? Oh, what have we got? got your fans out there. All right, we're ready to start the second half of play, and we'll double the value of all of our questions. A reminder, the winner of today's game will be going after the ultimate challenge, and that, as you know, is worth $10,000. Here are the six categories we're going to play this time. Lost lands, literary quotes, blue places, names in politics, today in history, and horse sense. The choice, Rick, is yours. Let's go with today in history, please. Today in history, for $300, medical firsts, birthday celebrations, $500 question on world disasters. Select one, make a wager. For $400, Rick, look to the video wall. The man who painted this portrait of George Washington was born on this date in 1755. Name the artist. Stuart. Stuart is right. That's an amazing answer. I, didn't, I thought when I saw that... Who will ever know that? There is the man who knows that. Melinda and Dennis for $500. On this date in 1984, a leak at a Union Carbide plant sent a deadly gas into the atmosphere in the world's worst industrial accident. Name the city in India where this disaster occurred. Dennis? Bhopal. That is correct for $500. Five subjects left over there, Dennis. Which one? Names and politics. Names in politics for $300, controversial leaders, attorneys general, and heads of state of the choices. Time to wager. For $400, Melinda, you're New Mexico's new attorney general. Your uncle Morris is an Arizona congressman, and your father, Stuart, 
is a former secretary of the interior. What's your last name? Udall. You are right for $400. Rick and Dennis for five. Mary Robinson, a law professor at Trinity College, recently made history by becoming the first female head of state of what European country? You're going to pass it. It's Ireland. Gentlemen, Melinda, you have control of the board. Where do you want to play? Uh, why don't we try literary quotes, please? For $300, we have English poets, American beats, and Irish novelists is the $500 question. Three to five. And everybody's going for the $400 question, which makes it $800 as it doubles. All the values double this time around. Stand by, all three of you. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness are the first words of what poem by Allen Ginsberg? Rick? Howl. Howl is right for $800. You have the now right to go over and finish up the board if you want. Well, let's go. I don't know any of those. You don't have to but take But let's it. try. No, let's try English poets. All right. You're real sport for $600. What English poet wrote the line, no man is an island? Would have been a good idea to pass it. John Dunn, that cost you $600. Rick, you still have control of the board. Where do you want to go? Blue places, please. I'm sorry, they weren't all up there when you looked. Do you still want to stay with Blue Still with Blue Places. All right, thank you. For $300, we have Blue Bayou, the Blue Ridge Mountains, and Blue Danube. And if you will, please place your wager. For $300, Dennis, Linda Ronstadt recorded a popular remake of the song Blue Bayou. Name the man who made the original recording. Roy Orbison. He also co-wrote it. For $300, you're right. Melinda and Rick for four. The Blue Ridge Mountains are part of what larger system of mountains? Rick? The Appalachians. That's correct, for $400. And you still control. We have Lost Lands and Horse Sense left. Lost Lands, please. For $300, El Dorado, Atlantis at four, Shangri-La at five. Wager? For $400, Rick, the Lost Land of Atlantis is supposed to have existed in the Atlantic Ocean. One of the first men to write down the history of the disappearance of Atlantis was what Greek philosopher? Socrates. Sorry, it was Plato that will cost you $400. Melinda and Dennis for $500. Shangri-La, a mythical land of eternal youth supposedly situated somewhere in Tibet, was described in the novel Lost Horizon, written by whom? Dennis? Hilton. That's right, James Hilton was the answer we're looking for. <laughs> Dennis, the last one up there is uh, horse sense. These are the questions you have up there. TV horses, literary horses, and mythological horses. Please select one. For $400, Rick, give me the name and number of the Shakespearean character who offered to trade his kingdom for a horse. Richard III. You are right in both regards. Richard III is the answer. Dennis and Melinda, for $500, what was the name of the Greek hero who rode the winged horse Pegasus? The name was Bellerophon, and nobody gets penalized by that. Now, that sound means you're about ready to uh, go to the final challenge of the day. You'll be able to wager any or all of the monies in your account on the final question of your choice. I will clear my throat, and we'll be back, and we'll do this right after this. <laughs> TV 11 News. This is a special report. Good afternoon. Pat Arson back in the WBAL newsroom. Authorities now report 19 people dead and at least... The object, of course, is to get the highest wager to get the question. And you all have a very good chance at it. You have 15 seconds now to think about it and place your wager. The challenge is yours. Players' choices have been locked in. Linda, you have $1,000. It is your money. How did you decide to wager it? I decided to bet $500 on rain. All right. Uh, let's see. Dennis, you're next in line with $1,750 in your account. What was your strategy? I put $250 on the Tempest. All right. So far, so good. That's the two of you. Rick, you're uh, the high man in the money department. What did you do? Well, I put $1,500 on the Tempest. Well, that means Dennis, he's taking it away from you. <laughs> 
What this means in, in short stroke language, Dennis, is your $1,750 could be a winning number, even though you're not participating in the questioning. It all depends on how it turns out over here. Melinda, we're going to start with you. You wagered $500, a grand total of $2,000 on the category of rain at double the odds. So stand by for your question. In the play Rain, adapted from a story by W. Somerset Maugham, the Reverend Davidson attempts to convert a carefree young tart to religion. For $2,000, name that young woman. I have no idea. Miss Sadie Thompson oh. was the answer. Rick, you're shaking your head. You knew that one. Now let's hope you know yours. <laughs> you. you wagered uh, $1,500 at three times the odds, a grand total of $7,400. Now, Dennis, if for any reason he does not get this, you, sir, will be the champion. So there's uh, two people very interested in the outcome of this. Stand by, Rick. In William Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, a magician named Prospero reigns over an enchanted island where he's served by a mischievous sprite who can become invisible at will. For $7,400, name that mischievous sprite. Puck. No, sir. No. Ariel was Ariel. the answer. Guess what, it. Dennis? You pulled it out by standing on the sideline. <laughs> that means you can never tell what's going to happen here. Get the wagering going on. I was, you know, I was trying to encourage Melinda. Don't worry, it's not over. You're the low man on the totem pole and all this. Here's Dennis sits over this, the whole thing out, and you've won it now. Rick, you have a grand total for three days of $20,800. I don't think anybody's going to feel re really, really sad about this whole thing. Melinda, you have consolation of $500. Now, Dennis, with $1,750, in just a second or two, you have one question, one answer, and $10,000 rides on this thing. So let's get down there, and I'll meet you in the middle, and we'll be back right after this. The Nolan Brothers. We'll make Nestle Toll House cookies for their wives. Because if they can bake, we can bake. That apron, Bob, it's you. You really think so? Here they are, Bob. Rich and creamy Nestle Toll House morsels. Well, you think these are the creamies? Hey, don't you think so? Mm. Not only that, I've eaten a few cookies in my day. Bob. Hmm? The wives. Very rich. Very creamy. Bob. Huh? Slow down. Slow down. Slow wives. Don't remember even. the wives? Rich, creamy Nestle Toll House morsels. Make your house a toll house. Bob. 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 Bobby. Bob. Get. Give me that. WBAL-TV and BG&E present The Great Holiday Cook-Off. Win one of four weekly prizes. Then, each weekly winner will appear on WBAL to compete for the grand prize, a trip for two to Orlando, Florida. To enter, write down your favorite holiday recipe on a 3x5 card with your name, address, and phone number, and drop it off at a BG&E store near you. This week, enter to win this fabulous Panasonic stereo. And while you're there, check out the big savings on selected Panasonic products. Stop by BG&E and enter today. People young and old who can't read, students dropping out, drugs and guns in the classroom. Well, in response, WBAL-TV has launched Great Expectations, a major educational project. We'll be presenting dramas and documentaries addressing those issues. We, we spent a couple of moments while we were talking about Louisiana and the radio business and all. I'm trying to get you to not concentrate on the stuff I have in my hand, but uh, here we go. We're going for $10,000, and if you are ready, turn this way, and Dennis, I'll offer you up two categories, and they are... The Social Sciences and Great Battles in History. Which one would you like to play? I'll take Great Battles in History. All right, sir, if you'll turn this way and sort of face toward me, I'll ask the audience please to be very quiet. You know, it's a $10,000 question. There's an awful lot riding on this, so here we go. Great Battles in History. In 1805, Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte scored the most brilliant victory of his career. He defeated the Russians and the Austrians under Emperors Alexander and Francis. That battle took its name from a small town in Czechoslovakia and is also called the Battle of the Three Emperors. For $10,000, what was the name of the battle? You have five seconds. Dennis, may I have your answer? Habsburg. 
No, sir, it was Austerlitz, but don't be discouraged by that. See, these are the toughies. I mean, these are $10,000 deals. Tomorrow you'll be back. We've got two new challengers to face you. If you knock them out of the box and you go until you are defeated, you'll come right back here to this pedestal and go for another $10,000. In the meantime, you've got $1,750 to your credit. I wish you all the very best of good luck. We'll talk a little more radio tomorrow when we get together. In the meantime, if you have a chance, send the word along to join us here on the Challengers every Monday through Friday. And remember, there's only three weeks left until Christmas. See you tomorrow for now, Dick Clark. So long. Contestants today will receive the Doville Diamond Watch by Armatron. Diamonds and rubies surround a superb quality timepiece from Armatron, America's Watch. Introducing new Baby Magic Shampoo, the only baby shampoo that can promise no tears, no dyes, no st static flyaway, and hypoallergenic too. And advanced formula Centrum, a high potency multivitamin, multimineral formula with beta carotene. Centrum, more complete from A to Zinc. And holidays just aren't the same without Lifesavers, Keepsake Tin, and Sweet Storybook. Lifesavers candy isn't life delicious. And living with pain, Joe Namath calls Flexol a winner. Flexol, relief from pain and stiffness. Thank you.